The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi, and on the way, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist, and others, Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. Jesus asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, You are the Messiah. And Jesus sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. Jesus said all this quite openly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, Jesus rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Jesus called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The Gospel of the Lord. Beloved in Christ, grace to you and peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take your yoke upon you, take my yoke upon you, and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Are you weary? Weary of the weight of the world's problems, the suffering of a global pandemic, the crises of our society? Are you burdened by your personal concerns and anxieties, your fears of the future? Good news then. Jesus, God with us, says, come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens and I will give you rest. I will yoke with you and help carry that weight. When Jesus said this to those first believers, they remembered Isaiah's words we heard this morning. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word and to listen as one who is taught. That's Jesus, they exclaimed. That's what he said. God's promise in Isaiah has come to us now. And that's your hope and mine in this weary world. In Christ, God comes in person into the world's suffering to help lift some of the weight of all that burdens life. And the world needs this promise more than ever. Nearly everyone is exhausted right now over the stress of the pandemic, 
social crises and upheaval, the need for a healing change and transformation of our society, and everyone continues to bring their own burdens for themselves or for those they love, concerns about health, about dying, about struggling to make ends meet or losing jobs, about faithfully following Christ, about holding a family together in the midst of conflict and crisis. Into that weariness and weight, Isaiah says, God comes to you in person. To all people, yes, but to you too. To ease that weariness, help you carry some of that which burdens you. The triune God comes with shoulders already yoked for you so that whatever overwhelms you can be carried in tandem with God, Jesus says. And that's the point of Jesus' path to the cross that Peter reacts against so strongly today. Jesus didn't go to the cross because he somehow wanted to suffer pain. Jesus, God with us, went to the cross to take the pain of the world onto God's shoulders and bear it, to allow himself to be struck and spat upon and insulted, as Isaiah says in this servant song today, to take the weariness of the world and heal it. At the cross, God shows you that you're not alone in your weariness and suffering, that God, as the prophets long promised, will come to you and help you and bear you up, give you hope that there's healing on the other side, even if sometimes that healing comes with death and resurrection. At the cross, God shows you that weariness and suffering aren't things to be avoided or feared, but shared. Because when they are shared, the burden is light. And it's easier to find hope than when you're drowning alone. At the cross, God shows you that there is no simple answer to what wearies you or the world. No easy solutions to suffering, but that God's answer is to come to you and to the world and help bear that weariness and suffering and so transform it into life. And the really beautiful thing about the servant songs in Isaiah, like the one we heard today, is that they were never intended to mean only one person or one Messiah. If you read them carefully, they call the whole community to be the ones who know how to sustain the weary with a word, who offer themselves for the sake of others. In our funeral liturgy, we claim that with Paul's words from 2 Corinthians, saying that God comforts us in all our sorrows so that we can comfort others in their sorrows with the consolation we ourselves have received from God. Isaiah says to you, today, that God has given you the tongue of a teacher, the listening ear of a teacher, so that you can know how to sustain the weary with your word, with your embrace, with your sigh, with your self-giving love. And yes, that will mean sacrifice for you and for me, Jesus says today. It will mean the losing of one way of life for the sake of the other way. But when we suffer with each other, we reach the depths of what love is. And love shared within a community transforms every burden into grace and life. Peter was right. The path of the cross, for Jesus and for all who follow him, doesn't sound like a path worthy of a Messiah, a Christ, God's anointed. But Peter's no different from any of us. The world always gets confused 
and thinks that winning is the most important thing, that if you're suffering or if you're struggling, you must have failed. But the world's way always ends with more suffering, more oppression, more pain, more violence. And even those who think they've won have actually lost. But God has a plan that will bring healing to this world, salvation. God has come and continues to come to share the weariness and pain of this world and heal it and to offer you rest and rest to the rest of the world too through you, you who are also Messiah, God's Christ, God's anointed. Because that is the way that God will save this world. And save you, too. In the name of Jesus.